Hi guys, welcome back to Taylor's Workbench. I've been progressing with the um, Chinook just a little bit. Uh, it was a very busy week, so um, there was not much accomplished really. I'll take a look at what I got. Um, just uh, if I ever get that down the first time, it's not bad. Here's the Chinook. Um, I <clears throat> smoothed over all the parts. I added the engine nacelles on either side and uh, I have been doing some uh, fitting controls of uh, other parts that will be added but mainly what I've done is I have uh, taken the clear canopy and this canopy uh, will have to be masked. Um, I used as a first step, I dipped it into Future and then I placed it on the workbench hold with the crocodile clamps like that. And um, I made sure to put a Kleenex underneath to make sure that all the accumulation of Future would be taken away by the uh, underlying Kleenex. You can see the two spots in here. This is actually um, what got off the surface while drying. You can see I have started to mask the uh, clear parts and make it ready for installation. Masking the canopy even in 144 scale is not really a problem if you choose to use the proper material. The proper material is of course Tamiya masking tape. There is no better masking tape than that. There is a maker it's called Kip which is basically the same, oops, the same material as the Tamiya masking tape. It's just a little different. Um, both are equally well suited to do the masking jobs for us. Uh, the Kip tape is um, a lot cheaper than um, the Tamiya tape, but it comes, this one comes in um, very nice uh, portions and widths that you can use as a modeler while this of course this is for huge surfaces and general masking and everything so this is a good stuff and it's got a uh, it will provide you with a clean edge wherever you go good stick and usually well I hadn't have any problems with lifting up the uh, tape and uh, taking away um, portions of the paint. It never happened. This is really good stuff as well. So if you can get a grip on 308 Kip tape, yeah, that's pretty good. All right. Um, now, masking this canopy seems to be tedious because it's so small, but actually it's not a lot smaller than, uh, say, the canopy of a 48 scale uh, 109. If you look at the panel sizes, I mean, there's a small stuff and there is small stuff. So you can do it. This is quite easy to do. What you need is, you need, of course, the, the part, the dipped and fully dried canopy part, the tape, toothpick, very important, and your pointy knife of choice. It can be Exacto, it can be Alpha. This is uh, Tamiya design. Um, the most important part is don't use a an old blade to uh, do the masking bit. On another note, if you have dropped your uh, canopy into Future, the problem is handling because Future will not only react to, um, to ammonia, but it will react to temperature as well. If you handle the parts too long, it is possible that there is some kind of a melting effect, really, and you can leave imprints of your fingerprint 
in the future and it will stay there forever if you don't touch up. So what I do is I use a simple one-way glove. Well, I use them multiple times usually. This is why they get on so badly. But these plastic, um, these plastic gloves will help to um, keep your part from free from any fingerprint line. So when I'm handling these parts, whenever anything is um, has been in contact with future, then I wear gloves all the time, no exceptions. As soon as another layer uh, of paint is on top of it, you don't need the gloves anymore. But the pure future, this is my feeling. Um, probably you have different experience, but in my feeling, um, everything is very, very prone to accepting fingerprints. So, um, use the glove as a safety precaution. It does help me a lot. Now, you take an itty bitty piece of your Tamiya tape. You can touch it a couple of times on the back side to make it less tacky. Um, of course, I need to put on my Optivizer the first, first thing because otherwise I won't see anything. Now you just take the tape and find a conforming line um, so to reduce the number of cuts you have to make. So I'm aligning, finding a straight edge on the canopy and this will be the leading edge of the of the mask I'm using the um, to have this in a good fit you use the toothpick and trace all the shapes of the panel you are you trying to mask here and uh, the good part about the toothpick is you get into the recesses real close without damaging the underlying surface and without damaging the Tamiya tape. You can actually force it into every recess and every corner and the more sharp the edge is that you provide with your pressing down of the tape will make the following step, which is the cutting, more easy. As soon as it fully conforms, you take the fresh blade with a tip and then from out of any corner you start and just trace the edge of the panel you want to have masked. Do not work into the corner, but work out of the corner. Place the knife in the, into the corner and then pull the knife along the edge, the tracing edge. Do not work into the corner. That is usually not such a good idea. It doesn't provide you with the necessary sharpness of the corner. Now, everything should be fine. And just pull away the tape, take the toothpick again to push the tape back down just in case it has lifted on you on some place or some portion. And um, well, I haven't used the, I haven't been too careful placing the tape, so I need to trace the upper line again. And again, remember not to work into the corner, but out of the corner all the time. and the casting the masking bit is done 
it's that easy it's not really much of a trick but you need to, uh, some exercise to do it and you can see that small bit of the tape you get you can still use it you know you can go and just mask off the next bit just put it down use the toothpick push down the tape into all the recesses I can understand this is not the work that most airplane modelers love because that is some um, small stuff you have to work with here and uh, sometimes it doesn't work out I mean this on this demonstration actually I'm pretty lucky that everything works out pretty straight forward without giving me a hard time but you see if I can do it you can do it there's no magic to us falling off by itself. That is quite okay. Of course doing bigger canopies is a tad bit easier than the 144 scale like this. But you know something you need to do and uh, it's not that difficult after all. All right, I'll continue and I'll come back with uh, any new step I'll be taking. This will be taking me a while and uh, I'm, I do not have that much time today anyway. So uh, I hope you like that and uh, hope to see you in a bit. Bye. Hi guys, I'm making good progress on the Chinook. I'm well, just a little uh, impression of the thing right here. Focus, focus, focus. It's coming together fairly nice. Major parts are assembled. Uh, what I have to do now is you can see the masked canopy right there. And um, I gotta mask all these windows as well. If you're lucky, you're one of the people who have a Waldron punch and die set. These are just great there are a few makers uh, of punches out there but in my humble opinion this is the best now uh, how do you shape that it's quite easy really you take the trusty Tamiya tape and you take any plastic bag yeah waste from whatever in you know in your plastic section so let me show you this how this is done on the workbench um, okay Move off the stuff here what you basically do is just find the proper sized punch um, which I already have this is perfect perfect punch punch and die set take the trusty Tamiya tape Put it on the on the plastic bag, and now um, you need something like I don't know um, stiff cardboard or plastic from from any waste box or something like that to give that a little counter pressure. What I will be using is I got some some paper card here. That goes into the paper right here. On goes the, <clears throat> the punch and die set. And, uh, oops, should be using the stop sharp end of the stick, of course. And then you just 
punch it. Out comes your proper shaped and whoops, ready to tape mini disc. Now you just stick it, whoops, into the place you want it to be. Oh, whoop. There you go. Uh, of course, ha! Of course, you need to remove the layer of. You need to remove the plastic layer. You glued that thing on. Use a offer knife to insert and then just peel off your disc and it's ready to be stuck. I certainly hope this shows on the video nicely. There you go. And perfect fit. As usual, always push it down, but of course you need to be gentle not to sink your window into the, back into the fuselage. The more problematic part of the Chinook is that you have bulged uh, windows like that. And these are quite complicated if you do not have any liquid masking. I definitely recommend liquid masking for uh, to use on those bulgy windows. All right, I will be, oops, uh, well, let's see if I can show this. Uh, I got a product here um, this is uh, from an art shop. This is for acrylic um, painting. Yeah, whoops, and that went the battery. I have a new product here for uh, liquid masking. Um, this says masking pen. Uh, I hope this works. Uh, well, this is the first time, so bear with me. Um, okay, removable. Do not leave on the paper longer than two days. Well, I'm not using it on paper. I certainly hope this will be useful on plastic too. All right, so what do we got? This is uh, 25 milliliters of masking fluid and let's see if we can get it open just let you have a let you see some of the action here okay this is a very nice and pointy applicator here uh, push it and whoa okay there it goes and this is not Very gooey, pretty liquid stuff. Let's see how that works. Just taking a toothpick and spreading it out. It's pretty thin. It's really, really thin. And I'm quite surprised, really. This this was sold to me at a modeling show, and uh, I'm quite surprised how thin it is. And it's a really, really thin film. I don't know how long this is going to take to dry, but um, I will let you know. See you in a bit. All right. I had this liquid masking uh, dried on paper, and um, it's removing 
fairly well, even though it's not quite without issues. It's leaving remnants, at least it does on the paper, but that might be due, the, due to the quality of the paper. I have uh, put a little on plastic here to see what it does to plastic. Yeah, of course, this is not styrene, but um, and actually it should do the trick. Well, it does take some drying, but I'm fairly convinced it will work. So, what I will be doing is, now that I have masked off all the windows, all the flat screens, window screens uh, of the Chinook, there's still the um, bulgy ones that need masking. You know, these are really ball-shaped, domed, whatever. Um, and um, these need masking too before I uh, put some primer on the kit. All right, uh, so um, I'll be doing that and uh, then I will be applying white primer. Um, I have a special brand. Wait, let me pick it up. My favorite white primer is show skull white from citadel this is a from a company uh, that's uh, specialized in gaming items but this is a very very nice shiny white and it it's got great properties dries quickly um, is very nice for uh, micro gap filling Oh, it's just a great stuff and uh, I can recommend that if you use if you need white primer This is the stuff I would recommend. All right uh, next. I'll be showing you the result of the priming and uh, The removal of the masks All right. Oh wait, uh, of course. I forgot first. I will paint the uh, Canopy section um, with black paint so that the frames will be black or will appear to be black on the inside before applying the white primer over it. All right, um, well, let's uh, see how that works out. Uh, see you in a bit, bye. <laughs> 